Today on Bridging the Gap, Dan Cole talks about the regatta, followed by our weekly WLKY weather report. Hello, Dan. You are the president of the Madison Regatta, aren't you? Yes, ma'am, I am. Now, how many years have you been doing that? This is the, my first year as president. Uh, I've been involved with the committee for about 10 years. Been in and around the sport since childhood. My dad was involved, and my brother has been involved off and on for several years, so it's most of my life, really. So that's how you got interested in all this, was your dad and your brother and everything. I was in the pits in diapers. <laughs> Well, there's nothing wrong with that, <laughs> but that does pique your interest, and you and you get used to it, and you enjoy the boats. You're well, not afraid. Yeah, of them. Right? No, you you grow up in and around it, and it's just, right. it's just it's it's in your fiber. It really it really and truly is. It's it's in, it's in your blood. You just you grew up with Bill Muncy and Dean Chenoweth and guys like that, and they were your dad's pals. Yeah, but they know. didn't seem like famous people, though, did they? They were just like your dad's friends. I was in awe. Oh, I was in awe. They were your they, heroes. They were, Dean Chenoweth, yes. <laughs> Dean Chenoweth, yes. Bill Muncy was a very nice man. He used to take my brother Bill and I for motorcycle rides oh. up and down Vaughn Drive way back in the day when cars still could drive up and down right. the river during the event. Oh. He'd give my brother and I motorcycle rides, and that was pretty cool. So you, you'd get out of the pits for a little while and go for a motorcycle ride? That was the only time we were allowed out. I mean, it was weird. All these, all, the, all my friends, they wanted to end the pits. Right. We wanted out. We wanted to be where the people were, you know? I mean, it was it was boring there because those people are there working, and that's what a lot of folks don't understand. Yes. Those people are there working. So you got to stay out of the way, et cetera, you know? Um, it's. And they're serious when they're in there because whatever oh, yes, they do, those boats have to run peak yes, performance. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, they do. You and can't be distracted putting a bolt on. So we were kind of bolted to the judges stand, as it were, and all my friends were out having fun. Oh, and see, now that would be bad, seeing all your friends up there running and playing. Right. Mm, man. Well, now, when do you start planning for this? Is this something like after the races are over, you start, or is it sooner? Technically, I started July 5th last year. I really started probably in May, June, getting ready for my year, you know, right. as, as president. And you just, you have to start. I mean, we talked about it earlier. You know, you're starting on next year now. Right. You know, truth be told, you really are. I mean, because all your dominoes are pretty much ready to fall at this point. Yes. So it's, yeah. So yeah, you start you well over a year in advance. Um, I talk about my dad and my family a lot. My dad was in motorsports marketing his entire life. And he always told me, you start planning your event the day after it ends. That's true. And, and we did. And or we sooner. Did. And we did. And we, and we did. We, it, was, yeah. it was very good. A lot of challenges, but we just kept steaming forward, you know, and pushing, and here we are. And the regatta has grown a great deal over the past few years. You know, more people are finding out about it. And right. Um, it's, you know, the, the sport itself and even our event, its heyday was easily in the 70s right. and early to mid-80s. And then it just, you know, interest waned. Uh, quality of competition, things like that. It made, made it right. tough. And there's television now. Exactly. exactly. So well, more the, people watch it on TV. Ex exactly. Well, and, you know, live streams and things like that. Yeah. Hopefully they'll, they'll get that going in the, in the near future. But this year I think you're going to see, and I hope knock on wood, you know. Uh, there we <laughs> yeah, go. go I had to do that. Um, <laughs> I think we're going to see more people. We've done a lot of things. We, we yeah. did zero, sorry to my friends in these industries, newspaper, radio, television, spent zero dollars. We've just focused everything on our social media and print. And we've gotten so much positive stuff back from that. Right. And it's, I feel real good about it, I do. And you would be surprised how many people are on Facebook. Your great grandmother's on Facebook. You yeah. know, your your grandkids are on Facebook. I like when I like when the older people, and I say older, I'm not young by any stretch, but the Facebook. <laughs> I saw it on the Facebook, and yes. I, I I love that. Or they think it's true because it was on Facebook. Exactly. Well, there's young people too there, but especially the next generation, they're into extreme sports. Yes. You know, they want that bam, bam, bam act, action yes. right now. You're right. And so we by, we went to the two mile course this year, which we used. We did 1.6 and then two during the bridge construction. The year that it was two, I had the opportunity to go to the San Diego race, the Detroit race, and what was, I went to one other, I went to the Sacramento race. 
as well as Madison. And we had the most competitive heat races consistently oh, yes. on the, of the whole circuit that year. Because, okay, you look at Jimmy Shane, the hometown favorite, okay? Mm -hmm. He is. Everybody loves him. Yeah. But he has so much better equipment than what some of these other teams do. By going to this two-mile course, it takes it out of the equipment hands, skill. so to speak, now and puts skill. it into Jimmy's hands. So we're going to see how he's going to, you know, c compete against against these other guys. Andrew Tate in the U9, that guy got a whole lot out of that boat last year. Cal Phipps in the Wiggins boat, the 27. Oh, yes. Got a lot out of that boat last year. Um, Shannon and Scott Rainey with the 11. They've actually, and, and they are literally to the wire. Mm -hmm. It came out of clear coat, I think, two days ago. I saw on Facebook. Um, it came out <laughs> of clear coat two days ago. Yeah. This is the hall that was a very competitive hall that they wrecked, I believe, in Doha a few years ago in Cotter. They've got that one fixed. The hall they've been racing is not the faster of the two halls they own. So they've got that fixed. So this is going to give those guys a chance right. to work. Because before when Jimmy or like... Um, a Dave Vilwalk in his time, when they come out of turn one, that two and a half mile course, they push a button, they hit the gas, and boom, they go. And these other teams can't keep up. Now he doesn't have that big, long straight right. to pull away. And it's going to make cornering a more, more of an issue. I think the, um, I believe it's the 27, is a very good cornering boat. And so you're going to see a little better competition this year than what you've seen in years past. Oh, wow. I can't wait to watch it all. And Cal Phipps. He is going to show us actually everything that's in his trailer, okay. all the all the tools that he has Great. and the extra parts that he has. Because some people think they just show up with a boat. Right, right. There's one guy last year that came with 20 propellers in case he needed one. So you know, I'm thinking, why would you need 20? But <laughs> he had 20 in a big sure. crate. Yeah. So and they were all on their little pegs. Yep. But Cal says he's one. He's going to put us in the trailer, and he's going to show us how everything works. That's and great, all the great tools. folks. Charlie Wiggins. Yeah. He's a former limited driver. Yeah. And they're in addition to the sport. I like to see another East Coast boat. Um, when they moved to Seattle, and I think '86 with the headquarters, it became very much a regional deal as far as where all the boats were from and things like that. We had the Websters out of Pennsylvania a few years ago, but they finally, because their boat broke. Got wrecked, oh. And they couldn't, and they just got to the point, you, you can't keep throwing oh. money at a toy, you know. Expensive. Exa yeah. Exactly. But seeing him back east here, and I know there's still a couple of holes in Decatur, Indiana. I actually gave a guy Ted Porter's number yesterday that's interested in buying a hydroplane, and he's from southern Indiana. So that would be great if he, if, if oh, he gets yes. a hold of Ted, and it's not far. So that would be great to have two. Yeah. Local then, boats. Then he can be here during yes. regatta. Yes. That's awesome. Now, on Friday, you've got what going on on Friday? Friday, we have the Steinhardt Heating and Air Test Session. Yes. Sir. We're giving, it's a four-hour window, I believe, three-hour window on Friday, one to four. It's three hours, one to four. And we're breaking it up. You're going to have the Grand Prix test. Then you're going to have the unlimited test, and they're going to kind of rotate back and forth. Right. This is where they, especially for the Grand Prix guys, because they haven't raced this year, this is where they're going to check their setups, make sure their stuff's right, because then that way they'll be ready to go racing on Saturday. Right. And then you look at the on the un unlimited side with Shannon and Scott with the 11, that boat's just now put back together. This is going to be real important for Tom Thompson to get in and relearn this hull because it's been probably two or three years since he's been behind the steering wheel oh, of this one. Yeah. So it gives them the opportunity because the other three teams to have feel it out. Right. Well, the other three teams have tested, either in Gunnersville or in Tri Cities a few weeks ago. So the other teams have tested, and so they kind of know what they've got. Right. So they are truly race ready, and Shannon and Scott will be. But this gives them the opportunity, and we've even put in an extra hour of testing for the next day, but I think we'll get there in a minute. I kind of got ahead of myself. You, know, you go right ahead, and you just keep no, going. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so, and then on Saturday, you got fireworks, but what's happening before the fireworks? Oh, we have racing. Yeah, we more, have racing. more racing. More we, more. Are, we are a regatta. <laughs> you know, we are a regatta. We're you going, got a regatta. You got a regatta, exactly. <laughs> We're going to have three heats of the Grand Prix. And by heats, I mean that's two flights. There's two races yes. per heat. That's never made sense to me, but, you know, I'm, it hasn't. You call it a heat, but yet you have two, two races in the heat. Come on, fix that. Um, and then we're going to have an hour of unlimited testing. Right. Again, kind of help Charlie Wiggins because his boat is rebuilt. Right. And they did well in Gunnersville last week. And again, with Shannon and Scott with theirs. And, of course, the fans are going to have to see that blue and white U1 
do some laps, Definitely. you know. And then we'll have another heat of Grand Prix. And then following that, we're going to have the first unlimited heat. Which, and it's a different format this year. Again, we talked about ch 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 changes, right? Oh, I think uh, change is great. Oh, it is. Well, let's look at it pragmatically if we can. Look at last year. We had eight boats in the pits. One boat did not complete a single lap. It tried to run once and never did. Right. It didn't finish that lap and it was on the trailer. Yeah. And then another boat couldn't qualify, ran one heat, and they were out. So that dropped us to six. And then take away a non-competitive boat, that left, left you with five. Right. Theoretically competitive boats. When well, you were there, the final yes. heat, there was probably a quarter mile between first and second maybe an eighth of a mile between second and third. You might have had a battle for third and fourth or fourth and fifth. I, I don't recall. Um, it was the only heat I saw of the day, so because uh, I was working, <laughs> you know. But that, and to me, is boring. I mean, I love the start. The start is the pretty, I've seen the Indianapolis 500 from the inside of turn one. There's nothing prettier than watching hydroplanes come around from, from, from the Madison Milton Bridge. Those rooster tails kicking, hitting 180, 190 miles an hour, gets you goosebumps just to talk oh, it about does. it. It does. So it's all there. The excitement's there. The shorter course is going to breed competition. We're going to have two boat match races where one race, Jimmy Shane's going to race the 11 with Tommy Thompson. Right. And so in, the, in, the, in that heat, so the next heat would probably be the, the U9 with Andrew Tate going against the 27th Charlie Wiggins. And they're going to rotate. Everybody's going to race everybody through the course of the weekend, but it's going to be a two-lap shootout. Then after that, we're going to have a Saturday afternoon Grand Prix final because they're going to have two finals. They're going to have a Saturday final, right. and then on Sunday, they're going to have the Midwest Tube Championship final. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that's just, um, we're, real, we're real excited about that. Midwest Tube is a new sponsor for us. The Russell family, they, really, they, they stepped up, and they've just gone... They're doing things for the teams. They're having a dinner oh, for them. Wow. Bought them cases of, you know, literally cases of water for each one of the Grand Prix class boats. So I can't thank the Russell family and Midwest oh, Tube enough it's... because they really did step up for us. And then Saturday night, something totally different again. We're back to changes. For years, you had free music at Fireman's Park. You did. The city paid the city and the American Legion. Yes, they Very did. graciously paid for the fireworks. We, we could not do it without them. Right. Don't think that we could by, by any stretch. But we're doing something different this year. We're having a concert in Bicentennial Park. Mm -hmm. The fireworks are still free for the community. That was very important to us right. because we don't pay for them. So we should not be able to say, no, you can't come. Then that, no, no. Right. But the concert in Bicentennial, it's a festival concert and a food truck challenge. That's right. It's the Madison Tool Incorporated Food Truck Challenge, another gracious first-time sponsor for us, stepped up. But we're having music. We have three bands starting at 7, the Jimmy Davis Band. We went to hit the local flair, and Jimmy, an amazing musician, he finished eighth, I believe, seven or eight years ago in the World's Blues Guitar Competition down in Memphis. Oh, I don't think a lot of people know that, though. That's chops. I mean, that's yes. chops. That's, that, that's talent, and that yes. guy's just amazing. He does a lot of studio work in Nashville now. He's, he's, a, he's a session musician. After that, and we're getting, now we're trying to look regionally, okay? We're trying to spread our market influence. The next act is Nick Bittmeyer and the Sawdusters out of Louisville. Oh, yes. Big following. Big following. I've heard a lot of good things. Yes. So we're hoping to bring some folks up from Louisville. And then our headliner, Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band. Yes, everybody knows that one. <laughs> out of Bloomington. <laughs> this guy has a following like you wouldn't believe. He did two YouTube videos over the holidays. They both over one million <laughs> views. I had 385 shares and felt good. This guy had one million views on his videos. I kind of call it Rockabilly Blues. I don't know. Maybe I should have read his, his presser, but I didn't. Or if I did, it's been so long ago. But it's very upbeat, up-tempo. The guy's an amazing yes. guitar player. Yes. And he's a big band. He plays the guitar. His wife plays the washboard. And they have a drummer. That's their band. But they are just, they're very high energy, very entertaining. And so what we're doing is he'll play for about 45 minutes before the fireworks. Then we'll take a break. Boom, boom, boom. God bless America, the whole nine yards, and then we'll come back to Reverend Peyton for about another 45 to 50 minutes set. Right. All the while, on top of First Street, and there's admission required for this. That's, I'll get to that in a minute, yes, okay? That, they need to know that. At the top of First Street, we're bringing in six food trucks from Cincinnati 
Louisville, and Indianapolis. We're bringing Thai food, Mediterranean, gourmet fried chicken, oh. barbecue, gourmet hot dogs. I know Cold Stone Creamery. And we're doing a challenge. We're going to have some celebrity judges give a trophy away before the fireworks probably. And, that, and that's food court judging. Yes, yeah, yes, all yes, that, food truck. Those, and that's yes. the food truck. That's the Madison Tool and Die. Oh. Or Madison Tool Incorporated, yes. excuse me. Yes. Food truck challenge. And so that's all available. And the idea is bring your family down and lay a blanket out. Because if you look at the riverbank, and like myself, I, I'm guilty of it. I have a big spot. But people have tarp spots and things like that. Thank and, you. You, and you don't want to impede on them. So this is a place where you can bring your family in a nice setting. Bicentennial is a beautiful park. Lovely, this nice little neighborhood there. And they can bring their own beverages, bring their cooler in because that's Madison Regatta. We did, we, it was brought up about a beer gardener like they do for the other festivals. And no, right. no, we are bring, bring your cooler in. Be moderate, of course. But bring your family, lay your blanket out, go up and get you some chicken legs or grilled cheese. That's the other no. one. Grilled cheese, the grilled, oh, the gourmet yeah. grilled cheese. And that's my cheat day. That's I have heard he does some awesome grilled yes, cheese. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the grilled cheese truck. Thank you. Uh, um, but yeah, if it's, and that's Saturday night. And it'll all get in about 11, 11.30. But it's, again, we're changing because we have to. If you don't change, you know as well as I do. Oh, yeah. You're going to die on the vine. Well, you know, you have to remember the younger people are coming up. Yes. And you're not really trying to attract the right. people that are in their 80s, although it's what? wonderful that they can make it out. One wonderful point. I had a social media discussion with a guy the other day, and it was about our choice of bands and things like that. And this was the guy that's my age, who went to school with me. He says, you need to get Fog Hat. When I was a kid. I was a fool for the city. Okay. <laughs> I love, love Fog Hat. Okay. I did. But I don't want to attract... I'm sorry, my age and older. We're going to be there. We're going to have our kids there. We're going to have our grandkids there. Right. We're going to be there because that's what we've done our whole lives. Yeah. It's this next You're generation. Already there. Yes, yes, our yes. Our age group is already there. Yes, ma'am. We are ingrained. We yes. are ingrained. We are yes. we are a part of it. So we want to bring the millennials, a 24 to 35 year old. Yes. We want to bring those people in. That haven't been before. Exactly. They don't know what and say if this guy from Brownstown, who's a big Reverend Peyton fan, comes in. And he, well, I'm going to go walk around a little bit. It's intermission, what have you. And he sees all these hydroplanes down in the pits, and he goes, wow, I've heard of this. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll get some buddies and buy tickets and come back the next day. That's right. Or come back next year. Yes. Because we have to think beyond this year. Yeah, as you know, we do. Yeah, you're, yeah. A, you're a planner. We have to think beyond this year. And that's just one of the ways that we're trying to do it. It is a big change. There will be no music at Fireman's this year. There is a $10 charge to get in if you have a regatta wristband. If you don't, it's 15 Now, I don't know about you, but I go to a lot of concerts. I have it's not more. been to a $10 concert in <laughs> no. many, many years. Nor a $15 Ex Exactly. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think when I was in high school, concerts were $15. Right. But, you know, where can you go see three caliber acts, right. Jimmy, Nick, and the Rev, quality acts, Access in, in Madison, we don't have food trucks. We have the taco truck. Yes, we do. We have the taco <laughs> truck, but we don't have food trucks. Believe me, that taco, I don't know. Is and he in it? Is he at the taco he, truck in it? No, because he <laughs> didn't belong to an association, but he is one of our vendors. Oh, oh. He is one of our vendors this year, yes. He's yeah. not in, he, he, they have to belong to an association. Yes, in order, I got you. In order for this to work. But yeah, and things that we haven't experienced before, things we can do, and right. that's the whole point behind it. Change hurts. But change is good as well. Oh, I think I'm I'm not like most people, but I don't like the same thing all the time. No, exactly. I, I think I'm more exactly. like the twenty and thirty year olds. I, I like things to, <laughs> to change and you know be exciting. Right, exactly. But I think that's good. I think it's good that you're actually looking to do that and, and make it new and unique and fresh. We're trying. As a board we've, done, we've we've worked long and hard. Yes. We've, we've worked long and hard. So now when they're gonna be buying tickets, there's two different things they're gonna be buying, and that is actual regatta tickets to get in right and then it's the tickets to get to the food court yes so, now say if they don't have a regatta wristband and don't want a regatta wristband that's fine they can pay the fifteen dollars and go to the food truck trucks. concert fireworks yes in the in bicentennial you right. know you don't have to have a regatta band to get in i want to emphasize that you do not have to have a regatta band to get in on saturday night it's just you'll pay a five dollar premium yeah a little more in order to get in and, and enjoy what we've 
got to offer. Now, how do they get the tickets? How do they find they can place go, to get the Okay, tickets? they can go to our website and uh -huh. it will link through Eventbrite. The pre-sale, now that's something else. If you don't, if you don't want to buy a wristband, we had pre-sale available. I'm not sure. I think we cut that off this week, but that was an opportunity to buy it for $10 right. on the pre-sale and those sales did very well for us. That's good. That's great. But now if they just want to get tickets to actually get in, how are they going to we'll get them at the gate. You we'll, have them we'll, at the gate? Yes, we will have them at the gate. And which gate? Because there's, there's different gates. You can come in off of Central Avenue, okay. West Street, Vaughn Drive. Central Avenue, West Street, and Vaughn Drive. Yes, we're so going to have Bicentennial see. blocked off, mm -hmm. and we'll have everything, everything fenced. So where but th those are going to be those are going to be our three gates. And then they can just go in there and just say, "Hey, I want to, I just want to yeah. go into this part." And sure. They'll pay for their sure. tickets. That's cool. That is so cool. Okay, now on Sunday you're going to be winding things up and having some more events. And what is that besides the big race? I I am looking so forward to Sunday. <laughs> no, uh, you're looking forward to Sunday night. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, and yes, I will. Um, You're going to enjoy Sunday. Sunday is our last day of racing. Yes, it is. Uh, we started at 11. Both days started at 11, ended at 4. Again, the changes we talked about, and you've right. been before. Man, you start at 9, and maybe you're out of there by 5, and you got to wait for this, and you got to wait for that. That's where race-ready teams comes in handy. Yes. That's where having the cream of the crop come in comes handy. Uh, it's unlimited heat, 2A and 2B. And then we'll have a heat of the Grand Prix. Right. And then we'll have unlimited heat 3A, 3B. And then we'll fit, well, we will have the Midwest Tube Championship for the Grand Prix World Series, which is going to be big. You're, you're, people talk about, they all oh, we miss the noise. People our age, we miss the noise. <laughs> well, we've got the noise back. <laughs> the roar, the, the roar on the shore, as my brother likes to, likes to call it. Right. These guys run... 455 Hemis, big block blown Chevys, and they are loud. They will fill it up. Well, they're going to their final heat will be five boats, five boats wide. Oh wow! It's been a long time since we've had five boats wide on this river for a boat race, and that's the nice thing. They're just a touch smaller than the Unlimited, about three feet, I think. But that's just that's enough. Much. That's just enough yeah. to where we can do a five wide right. final. And then of course we'll finish like we always do with the 67th running of the main source Madison Regatta Indiana Governor's Cup. Oh wow. That will be a four boat final. And people, right. well, you're giving the governor's cup because it's the governor's cup and it's going to be four it's, years. It's, it's going to be four boats. Right. So we're we're okay with that. We're we're and we will award the governor's cup to the winner. Right. And it'll be the traditional four boat final for all those people that are mad at me for doing the two boats. They're still going to see a four boat race with the with the unlimited. And that kind of that caps out our weekend. That so hopefully by about five ten I can Sit down and go, yay or boo. <laughs> You're going to say yay. Cheer no or cry, what. I guess. You're going to say yay no matter what. So now, what is your favorite part out of all this that you've been doing all these years? What's your favorite Golly. part of regatta? Golly. I'm really thinking about this. You think about it. because when, when, when I was a kid, it was family. My parents were divorced. Dad was involved in hydroplane racing. We basically saw him Christmas and in the boat races. He lived in California, Florida, different places, didn't, so that was when we saw him and his side of the family. So at that time, it was, it totally was family. Now, my favorite part, two favorite parts. Number one is obviously the start of a heat when those guys come around that oh, first yeah. turn. <laughs> and they're just, it's just, it's beautiful, but friends. Friends. You, friends, yes, and they're friends and, forever. And, and family. My brother Sam, who's the ch the CEO of Grand Prix World now, he was the chairman of H1 for nine years. It was the one time a year he and I could get together and play golf. Oh, and we did. And I beat him. I beat him one year, <laughs> almost twice, but he quit. He walked off. I beat him one year, but you know, so friends and family, because it is, and for more than just me, it's a reunion. Yes. People some of the guys, their, some of those boats, you don't see them but once a year. Oh, no, and, no, exactly. And, and they are my boat racing family. Yes. They, they really are. Um, I'm probably closer to a lot of the GPW teams, yeah. but they're former Unlimited guys that have moved to the different class. So I've known them a long time. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's the, I see them once a year. That's why I, I drove in the parade. 
you know, and we always get fish sandwiches from the firehouse <laughs> yes. to hand out to everybody. We, yeah. I'll call. It's it's still in my phone under under fish place you're right all i have to do is hit fish place and i'll call and Lori harrod down at the fire department i'll say Lori, i need 18 or 20 or whatever that number is yes and as i pull up they bring it out to the curb to us because they know you you, you need them quick well we can't stop the parade <laughs> you, know. you know but yeah and that's you know and that's so friends and family and and, and reunion and reun reuniting with people the Noonans, Billy and Mike, H1 people from back in my dad's oh, day. Oh, yeah. His parents were parents with my parents. You know, Jackie, there's just so many of them. Greg, Greg Hopp and Lori Santillo, known them for years. Um, I flew to Seattle for the H1 meetings. I had dinner with my Grand Prix friends. Oh, wow. Because that's... That's, that's yeah, fun. That, that's who I had friends, you know, that's who my yeah. friends were. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah, friends. Oh, Definitely my favorite cool. part. Well, now, here's something we need to explain. There's a difference between Madison Regatta... H1 and GPW. Yes, Madison Regatta is, is Madison Regatta is the event. It's the event. We're yes. the event. We are the host we're the organization. We're the, we're the we're the hosting city. Thank you. <laughs> we're the host organization. Yes. H1 Unlimited is a sanctioning organization just as NASCAR is for the stock car, IndyCar is for the, the Indy cars, obviously. And Grand Prix World is the sanctioning organization for the Grand Prix series, the Grand Prix World Series. And they're two different two separate entities. We're very fortunate in that we got both because they are the two premier race entities on this on, 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 on the, the circuit. circuit today. Yeah, you've got the biggest and fastest classes, and they're both going to be here. And that was no easy task, but we, but we did get it done. But those are your basic differences. H1 has probably, I think, if you were generous, maybe 11 boats in their fleet. Uh, the Grand Prix, if you're generous, when you get out west, probably 15, 16. But they're both kind of revamping and they want to start regrowing. So you'll see bigger numbers. And that's my hope is next year, everything we've put in place this year works. So we can have the money right. to pay to bring eight unlimited hydroplanes back. The one thing that I'm, I'll stress, and I'll be vice president next year, Matt True will be president. Right. So you get him next year. <laughs> um, but I want to stress, I want quality. Right. Quality over quantity any any day of the week. Well, now that brings up a subject as far as, you know, you don't necessarily just take donations from corporations or no. entities. Oh, we would. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do. You do take them, but not sure. just from them. But individuals, if they really are enjoying this race, to secure the fact that we can keep it here, you'll take donations from oh, individuals. Donations are accepted. Oh, yeah. I don't care if it's a 10-year-old with a dollar thirty in his piggy bank. <laughs> That's right. You know, or a 50-50-year-old guy that wants to give me ten grand, i will take it all. But, yeah, and, that, and that's something, you know. This kind, is expensive okay, to put okay, on. Okay, kind of touches on this. I always get hit up this time of year for free wristbands. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's my free? I know. Yeah, I, mean, I hear people. I, I purchase myself <laughs> ten a year. Mm-hmm for whatever friends and family coming right. from out of town to cover their bases. Right. And then I'll tend to give a couple away. Like say if someone calls me and says, hey, how much are wristbands? When do they go up and where can I get them? And if I know them, I'll say, don't worry about it. I'll give you two. Because they didn't ask me for free ones. Right. They didn't. So why not help you know, help somebody out? Right. Maybe they'll spend it at one of the at one of the booths. That's true. In the midway, get a corn dog, they'll an elephant ear. Money while they're exactly. There. Maybe they'll spend some money there, and then you share it that way. You spread yes. it that way. But yeah, that's we'll take any donation we can get our hands on. Oh, that's awesome! I tell you, if we can keep this event here, in which it it's actually growing, and people are finding out about it, and some people didn't even know we had it here. They watch racing. Oh, I hear you hear that all the they time. They watch boat racing all the time, and I'm like, well, and why don't you come to Madison? You go back 15, they 20. They didn't know. You go back 15, 20 years. I don't care where I went in, in this country, and I lived in California, different places. I'm from Indiana. Where are you from? Madison. Isn't that where they have that boat race? Yes. You always heard that, and now you don't hear it quite as much. Well, we're putting yes. it back on their lips. We yes. absolutely are. Well, you got it on Facebook, and that's where it yes. needs to be. Yes, Facebook, Twitter, because that's where people Instagram, are. all those. We've been we've been beating it up. That's great. I I tell you, y'all have done a great job. Thank I think. you. We try. I think you've done a, amazing at getting it out there and everything. So, but you know, I don't know if we have anything else to tell them about all this. Do, do we leave something out or? Well, you can that's get it. your wristbands www.madisonregatta.com Call the office 812-274-0400 Crystal McHarg our 18 year veteran office manager, site manager, chief cook and bottle washer 
We'll be more than happy to accommodate you. She does just a wonderful job with our office. But again, www.madisonregatta.com or 812-274-0400. Well, I'll be there bright and early, as you know, and probably the whole weekend. So I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be wonderful. Look forward to seeing you. That's great. Well, now, as far as you all, if you are wondering how the weekend's going to look, you're going to have to check out what Jay says. Exclusive forecast for Madison, Indiana is provided by WLKY Weather. I'm WLKY meteorologist Tiffany Savona here with a few weekend events as we head into the holiday weekend, that is. We have the LaGrange Main Street in LaGrange last Friday of the month. It'll be at the Welcome Center, and there will be some tunes, food trucks, and a craft beer tent. Temperatures will likely be in the 80s. A few showers and storms will be possible early, but if you plan on heading out there, I would definitely go. Don't let the slight chance of rain keep you from attending that. And in Madison, we have a big weekend ahead. We have the Madison Regatta. The parade is Friday night at 7 o'clock. Saturday, we have the boat racing from 11 o'clock in the morning through around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Fireworks Saturday night at 10, and we also have the boat racing on Sunday as well. And here's that forecast for the Madison Regatta. Friday night, slight chance for a shower or storm. I think many of us staying dry. Best chance for rain looks to be on Saturday, and then Sunday's looking drier. It'll be warm and humid all weekend long. Hey, Jay, tell us what do you say? Hey, Jay, what do you say? We can count on you. After two decades, we can say a lot about Jay Cardosi. We can say he has your most accurate forecast and is the Ohio Valley weather expert. But it's not about what we say. What matters is what's Jay say. What's Jay say about your weekend plans, your little league game? His answer is still the one more people trust. Want to know the forecast? Just ask. What's Jay say?